Wait, what? You say you've used this trademark for over a hundred years and you're only claiming a trademark over it now? Oh. Oh. Hmm. What could possibly go wrong, right? I'm Andre Minkov, the founder of Trademark Factory, and in this video, I'm gonna share my thoughts about yet another trademarking screw up. This time around, it's Football Club Aberdeen running into a trademarking dispute with a sherry company. Because what football player doesn't like a good drink, right? All right, let me start by reading from the article and you can always find the link in the description below. Aberdeen Football Club loses whiskey trademark in row with Don Fino Sherry, or Don Fino, I don't know how to, how to say it, but either one of those. A Scottish football club has lost a legal battle with Spanish Sherry producer Don Fino, probably Fino, it's Spanish. All right, Don Fino. All right, let's call it Don Fino. And if it's Don Fino, then I'm sorry. All right, so they lose that legal battle over the name of its blended whiskey label. Aberdeen Football Club applied to register two trademarks, the Don's Dram and Don's Dram, one with the and the one without the which is usually completely unnecessary right if you use your brand without the then that's all you want to do just don's dram would have been more than enough it would have stopped anybody from using the don's dram as well and uh well, just think about it if i wanted to start a software company and called it the microsoft do you think it would be a few minutes before i heard back from their lawyers or a few hours right adding the doesn't really change anything and this is the uh advice that i often give uh business owners who are like well what if we change a little bit here or here uh would that overcome the objection that uh you think uh we're gonna face because there's a similar mark say forget about that mark if the change you're proposing would you be able to get away with that if you were to start a company that does software and do whatever it is that you want to do with the, this other brand to microsoft the microsoft or the micro dash soft right none of those things would fly if that doesn't work then those small changes probably wouldn't make that much of a difference in your case either so but let's go back to the article okay so they fly to register these two trademarks in september 2017 after partnering with a local distillery to create the blended whiskey however drinks producer sandman which owns the sherry label Don Fino objected to the move, arguing that it infringed on its own trademark, which has been registered in various forms for close to a century. The sherry maker applied for a trademark of a cape figure with a strap line, the Don underneath in 1935. So that's their uh, that's their uh, trademark. Uh, and in 1960, applied to register a trademark for Don Fino. Okay, so that. Uh, and uh, Sandman, according to the UK Intellectual Property Office, said the similarity between the trademarks is such that the relevant public will believe they're used by the same undertaking or think that there is an economic connection between the users of the trademarks. Well, that's the usual standard for confusion. Basically, what they're saying is, yeah, we understand the marks are not identical, but people who buy drinks may not necessarily 
uh, tell the difference enough to recognize that one comes from the Spanish cherry manufacturer and the other one comes from the football club. Okay, so let's keep reading. It said that the club could benefit from this confusion and demanded the application was stalled. Okay, Aberdeen argued that it had formed in 1903, more than 30 years before the first Don Fino application, and had been affectionately known as the Dons for over a century. The IPO ruled in Sandman's favor, concluding that most of the UK wouldn't be aware of Aberdeen's nickname. The club was ordered to pay 1500 pounds in legal fees and will now have to either change the name of its spirit or request permission from Sandman to uh, continue using the brand name, which after they oppose their trademark doesn't seem very likely. So this shows a huge difference between common law trademarks and register trademarks sometimes yes you can use common law trademarks to prove that you had first right to use it and that uh, you could do something with it but it's tricky it's very subjective it's something that requires you to prove that you're known under the brand that you're claiming as your common law trademark uh, the common law brand that you're known to a significant number of people who know you under that brand. And what significant number of people? What's significant enough? What's enough, right? Uh, and for some judges, it's one number. For some other judges, it's a totally different number. And uh, it gives them the opportunity to first decide what the outcome of the case should be and then say well if they want to give the uh if they want to award the case to the owner of the registered trademark they just say you know <laughs> we don't think that a significant enough number of people know you under this brand too bad or if they do feel that the common law trademark should prevail they'll just say well the defendant or the plaintiff has established that uh, their common law trademark is known to a significant number of people and it predates the date of the application for a registered trademark and so the common law trademark will take over. So all of this is pure speculation. It all depends on what the person who makes the decision will decide and uh, like I said it is very subjective and really what drives those decisions often is the thought of if this brand were so important to you you've been using it for more than a hundred years for more than a century if this was so important for you to be able to claim the Dons for your football club if this was so damn important, why haven't you taken the simple step that's given to you by law? All you had to do was go out there, file the application, pay a little bit of money, right? What is it? A price of a few tickets. Go out there, file the trademark, get it registered, and that's it. And then there is no problem. You don't have to prove anything. You don't have to prove how many people know about you. All you have to do is show one trademark certificate. We're a football club and uh, we might actually end up selling some drinks. <laughs> and um, all of this just goes to show that if you're serious about your business, if you're serious about your brand, you should never rely on just use of your common law trademark first of all, in what most countries they don't even recognize common law trademarks but even 
if your country does, maybe your Canada or US or a few other countries, just because there are some default provisions for how you could claim rights over a common law trademark doesn't mean that this is how you should build your brand. Something I always say, there is no reason in the world to spend a minute of your life or a dollar out of your pocket building a brand you don't own. Don't build a brand unless you know you can own it. Don't build your brand unless you file your trademark application and it's going through the process and you have a realistic chance of getting it registered. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you have and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and hit that bell button to get notified whenever the next video goes live. And if you got a brand that you want to protect, maybe you've been running your business for a hundred years. Maybe you've been running your business for three minutes. I don't know. But if you value your brand, if you want to make sure you own it, you got to protect it and you protect your brand through trademarks. So if that's you, go book a call at trademarkfactory.com forward slash call. So book that call with our strategy advisors and they'll help you get started. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.